I'm talking about young shakes. I'm to represent Jesse James. And this is for my city. Hey, hey, I do it for my city. Hello, this is Lacey Rice with Rice Fan Group, and today is a chat with HBCU Champions, episode 10. Today's guest is our University men's golf head coach Samuel Perrier, and his team won the MIAC Men's Golf Championship as well as the PGA Works Collegiate Championship, otherwise known as the Minority Golf National Championship. Congratulations, Coach, on, on your championships this year. I appreciate it. It's pretty exciting. It's been, it was a great season. Great, great. Well, it, it, it's always great to, that one of our HBCUs um, is a national champion. And um, we do want to first find out a bit about you. We definitely want to find out about that um, that PGA Championship and uh, what it is about and, and um, what kind of teams participate. Because not just HBCUs that participate in that, which makes that even more special, but there's a wide range of, of teams that participate in that championship. But uh, but tell us a bit about yourself, Coach. Um, what's your um, background in, in, in golf, and how long have you been coaching, and and how long have you been there at Howard? Yep, yeah, I uh, I'm from North I'm from North Carolina. Uh, it's funny, I'm that's where I am right now, and uh, I feel like I come back I come back here to get my energy. This is my energy source. This is where it started. Uh, you know, I played at Tennessee State. I've been in golf my whole life. Um, I played college at Tennessee State. I've I've been coaching now for what, 16 years or whatever it is, and uh, coached at four different schools. So I've been I've been blessed to be in the business for a long, long time. I've been able to work with a lot of young kids, uh, whether it's doing camps or clinics or uh, my association working at East Lake before I got into coaching junior golf in the East Lake. Uh, but at the same time, it's kind of neat because I think golf is still one of the only places where you can take a young person and give them some of those life skills, which will enable them to navigate the corporate line. And it can also improve on the personal side as well. So golf has been a part of my life, my entire life. I mean, I, I think about it right now. I've literally been playing golf for 46 years. Uh, and that's a long, long time. And sometimes I wake up, my body tells me I've been playing 46 years. Trust me on that. Uh, but at the same time, I've been blessed. And so, uh, if you take take that forward to having a chance now to give something back, coaching at Howard and working with young folk, uh, you know, a lot of them that look like me, which is a blessing in, in, within itself as well, has been has been one of the highlights of my career to this point. It's been pretty pretty exciting. Okay. Well, it's my understanding that the program there at Howard is is pretty young and and um, interestingly. <laughs> Uh, Steph Curry, the NBA legend, has <laughs> something to do with uh, restarting the program there. Yeah, Stephen, Stephen uh, basically met Otis Ferguson IV and who was one of the students at the school and, and Otis basically made his presentation to him like, hey, this is what we can do uh, with your support. And, and Otis is a wonderful young man and, and, and Stephen is, is arguably he's just an unbelievable person forget basketball, he's a great person. And so he and Otis chopped it up and they kind of dug through the details and through the dirt on why Howard would make such a good place, why it'd be such a great fit. And, uh, you know, Stephen decided to, to support the program, which is fantastic. And so uh, one thing led to another and he pledged his support for six years to really help get the program off the, off the ground and then when they called me and asked me to come in and be the coach at that point, I knew I would have to do some assisting and as far as raising additional dollars each year to help that process. But that's been, I mean, that, to me, that's the easy part. <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel like in this, in this opportunity, in this game, 
uh, anytime you can get some seed money to coach the program, the university, they have to do their part to go out into the community and across the country to raise the additional resources. So right now we're working really hard trying to create the endowment uh, which will allow this program to work in perpetuity and it'll be around a long, long time. Okay. So um, it is great that, um, you know, Howard has students like Howard. Howard is known for students like that, a activist students, um, students who are go-getters. Uh, you know, we, we know about the long line of alumni from Howard um, who have made differences internationally, not just in the United States. And so uh, I said, it, it's great that, uh, that you have students like that. And we will hopefully talk about uh, the student body and the academics there at Howard, what makes Howard so special. But um, want to pivot and, and, and talk about um, your first championship this year, um, which was your, comp, your MEAC championship, your, your conference championship. Well, I'll tell you what's interesting. Yeah, I mean, we can focus on the MEAC and the PGA Works, the Minority Championship, and I can explain that in detail. But I got to be honest with you, we were we were utterly close to winning two or three other tournaments during the year. So to me, the MEAC and the PGA Works were a compilation of a lot of hard work through the year. We, 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 we had a chance to win Georgetown's event, and we didn't pull it together in the last round. We were, boy, we were right there. I mean, and we beat, we still beat some really, really good teams, uh, but we were right there and we didn't pull that out. Then we played at Towson's event and we finished second, but we had the last two holes, we played lousy uh, and we lost that by a stroke. One of my guys won the tournament, uh, but we, we, we lost by a stroke. And I had said to myself, I said, God, I said, that was two we should have won in the fall uh, that we didn't win. And I, I knew if things, work themselves out because to me when a person who becomes a winner you have to learn how to win you just don't fall out of bed and win it's a process and so coming into the spring we did the exact same thing we we, we started out we had some really good rounds and a couple of events and then we would have a, a, a crappy round and then you you know you saw guys trying to pull it back together and sometimes it'd be the second round or the third round and then the weirdest thing happened at the MEAC we put it together, and then at the PJ Works, we went right back to that same schematic. We had a, a good, not a great, but a good first round, and then we had a terrible second round. And it was it was just the mindset. But yet, that evening at the national championship, we had a it was the best team meeting we'd had all year. It was the best team meeting we'd had all year. And so when the guys came out the third round, when I looked in their eyes, I said, "Wait a minute." That's a new, that's a different look. I haven't seen that. And the guys just came out focused. And yet every guy, all five guys pulled it together that last day and played remarkably well. So I say all that to say, you know, a lot of times it's the work you put into that leads up to what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, and the PGA works is, is even special because it's not just HBCU schools. They are HBCU slash uh, minority laden institutions. So there are other schools that the PGA invites that uh, have high minority concentrations that aren't African-American that are also invited. And so it's nice to be able to beat them all and to walk away and say, you're the best, the best minority institution in America, not just the best HBCU, it's, it's fun and fantastic. I'm not going to lie. It's fun and fantastic. Well, um, looking at, 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 at some of the information um, going to that um, PGA uh, Works Championship, um, I saw numbers anywhere between 30 to 41 uh, programs that would participate. Um, and so, uh, and from listening to you, I'm assuming that each team can have um, five golfers. Is that correct? Yeah, each team brought five players. You play five, count four. And they were uh, literally, they only allowed the best minority programs to attend. So all black schools can come. I mean, if, if the schools weren't good enough or 
They didn't have good enough tournament records or good enough tournament resumes. Uh, they weren't even invited. So we literally beat the best minority schools in America. Okay. Okay. Well, I know, um, you know, I, I graduated from an HBCU myself, um, Kentucky State. Okay. And, and I know Kentucky State has won that national championship a couple of times. Um, but um, let's go back back to the MEAC. Um, what was your competition like in conference? You know what's interesting? I mean, that's a good question because I think after we won the MEAC, it was a lot of it was a lot of black hating out there in the country. There's a lot of black folks hating on us because they know the MEAC isn't stacked. They knew some a lot of schools. I think the number is like six schools have left the MEAC in the last four years. So we received so much negative hating. Well, you guys beat. A few schools left in the MEAC with a golf program. That's nothing. Yada, 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 yada. That's fine. They're right. I mean, but you can only beat who you play. You can only beat who shows up. Uh, and yet, you know, the teams that showed up, like North Carolina Central and, and UMES, they had some good players. It's not like we came out and played some duds. They had some good players, and we had to play to beat those folks. Let's be honest. So, we weren't, I mean, nobody gave us even a shot, honestly. They taught, they, 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 they hated against us. And so we make it the national championship. We walk out and we beat their brains in. It's a good feeling because you can't hate anymore. But well, now what you going to say? We did what we were supposed to do, period. I think in this, in this realm of what we're trying to accomplish, uh, working at HBCUs, we should give these young people opportunities of a lifetime they should walk away and say you know what 10 years ago when we were in college we had a chance to play against some of the best competition on some of the best courses uh best white kids best black kids best foreign kids because that's what college is all about college is about the experience what we're building here at howard we're giving young people the experience and it's so interesting because there's so many people that are hating on us at howard that it's just, I mean, I'm walking every day. I love it because I, I have a chip on my shoulder. I love it. And the guys are walking around with a chip on their shoulder. They're like, okay, hey, we'll, we'll show them how good we are. And I love it because we are putting the work in. I promise you that. We're putting the work in. We really are. And so uh, we're putting it in in the classroom and on the golf course. And at the end of the day, that's all you can ask for in this realm. Well, I, I mean, I definitely feel you at, at, as a former coach. Um, I, I definitely feel you on, you know, you, you have to you have to play against who you have to play against. You can't uh, determine the other team's fate. You know, you, you don't uh, coach the other team or, you know, whatnot. So, you know, you just got to go out there and beat whoever is placed out in front of you. And, and not worry about the records and all that other type stuff. And, and, and that, that, that's um, shocking to me that you would receive so much hate from others for an accomplishment like that. Because at, at the end of the day, you still got a trophy. <laughs> I mean, that's, what it, that's what it amounts to. Well, the hate came after the MEAC. We didn't get any of the hate after the PGA Championship. We didn't get any hate after that. But after the MEAC, we got, we got a lot of it. I promise you that. Mm. And that that that's really funny because earlier today, uh, uh, you know, I know this is getting a little off topic. Uh, I listen to a lot of gospel rap, and one of my favorite songs is, is uh, "No Hate from Bizzle." Mm. <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly what he was talking about, and it's funny that you even brought that up. So maybe God saying something to me, I don't know. Well, I tell you, the one thing I, somebody explained to me a long time ago, which I've always relished, is that when when you have people that are negative and hating against you, and they 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 look like you, and they're recruiting against you, telling kids not to come to your place, that means you're doing something right. And when I look at our women's team, you know, our women's team, the entire team, all seven ladies made. We're in the Northeast Conference. All seven of our ladies made the Northeast Conference honor roll. Uh, they're on the, the uh, commissioner's list for academics. That's unbelievable. Out of seven ladies, you know, you have four ladies out of seven or five ladies out of seven 
with over 3.7, 3.75 GPAs. We're doing something right. And I look at the recruiting class that's coming in for the women. I look at the recruiting class coming in for the men. And we're going to be better on both sides next year. We're not losing any of our best players. So if you believe Rome wasn't built in a day, trust me on this. Howard is a perfect example. Rome wasn't built in a day. And so we're continuing to put our hard hat on, put our gloves on, put the blocks in place, seal it up, do it the proper way. And we realize in, a, in, in, in time, we will have the fiefdom and the kingdom that we really want, but it will take time. But we're excited with the progress we're making right now. And we're, great, we're grateful and thankful and inc incredibly gracious for the support that we receive. But we're also not short-sighted because we still know we have a long way to go. But we have to be patient in our current walk. So, um, is it how how difficult is that? Um, I, I I haven't really talked to many coaches who actually coach in two different conferences. Um, how well, how difficult tough. is it? It's tough in two different conferences, but more so than that, it's tough starting a new program. I mean, think about it. When you start a new program, you have to find places to play. You have to find students. You don't have a donor base to go raise money. So you got to get creative on how to get funding. Most people think, oh, yeah, well, Stephen Curtis have provided all the support for the program. They should be winning. I'm calling BS on that. What is it? Where does that happen? That's not true. We outra I mean, we're out raising money in these streets trying to get, get the program together. Uh, what Stefan has done for us is invaluable and it could not be replaced and could not have been done without him. But we still have work to do. He put gas in the tank. We still got to help drive the car. You know, so it takes a it takes a village. He's a part of our village and we love him. He's a part of our village. But it takes a lot. I mean, it, when you start from scratch, you're building and you're trying to put things in place. Thankfully, we have people believing us in scheduling. They've given, helped us find places to play in good tournaments. And then there's relationships. It's a lot goes into that process. And, and, and I really don't think a lot of people, whether they are in the athletic program, outside of the athletic program in the uh, academic administration. I don't think a lot of people really realize that. In fact, what you said uh, made me think back to a situation where uh, another HBCU was starting the program and, and um, you know, was being told, you know, I was told that, you know, uh, there was an organization that was providing seed money and, you know, the uh, athletic director was expected to start that program, and that athletic director was asked in, you know, three months, you know, well, you know, what are we, how are we supposed to sustain it? You know, that this is a certain amount of money, but how are we supposed to sustain this? You know, are they going to be, you know, because I know different, different um, institutions, different programs handle, handle fundraising differently. Yeah. Um, some of them might have um, hurdles placed in front of them where maybe the advancement office has to do all the fundraising for the entire uh, institution. Right. Others do have the leniency to have the AD to go out, fundraise. Others, you know, is on the coach. So, um, you know. Thankfully, you know, in your situation, you're able to to, to do that. Um, are there others within the department who help, you know, as far as the fundraising? Yeah, so the way we're set up right now, uh, our development office hadn't really helped us yet with the fundraising, but we're now putting things in place. And I think 20, the year 22, 23, I think development will become an integral part of what we're trying to build. It's just, again, that's a process. So I think development, we're, we're on the same page, on the same team. I think going forward, I think they're going to play a pretty good part in this. Uh, my AD and my president, uh, they've been fantastic. You know, I'm texting and talking with these guys. They've been 
uber helpful. But then, you know, I have a guy that I work with literally daily, a guy named Paul Bowden. Paul is, he's my administrative person. Uh, he, he, he's the assistant AD. So essentially he, over, he oversees golf. Uh, this man is invaluable. So I feel like I really have three people at the school and I deal with Paul every day. And Paul to me is, 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 is more so now like family more so than colleague. But I deal with these folks regularly and, and they, they're fantastic. They help me do what I do. Uh, they all have the faith and the trust and belief because they know I'm a fundraiser. That's one of my strengths. Uh, and they let me run. They let me do what I need to do. Uh, but at the same time, no, I know I can call Paul or the AD or the president, and I know I can get the assistance that I need. And now that taking that a step forward, and in, in, in by the end of 22, 23, I know we'll have development on board. And once we create that engine, I feel like the sky is the limit what we can do at that point. But it's a process. It just really takes time. I mean, you know, you it takes time at, at, at the different universities for people within the university to understand what are the needs of golf. You know, you have some of the smallest teams, but if you think about it, golf could really help elevate a lot of programs at all of the HBCUs if they're done properly. That's why I kind of was interested to see a couple of HBCUs drop golf programs. I think it's a mistake. Just on the history of golf programs, they're the ones that can help bring funding to the school more so than some of the other programs. So it's just it's just basically teaching folks how to lead and teach and, and showing them how the relationship can help be beneficial for the university as well as uh, programmatically as well. Okay. So, um, and, and not to beat a dead, uh, not to beat a dead horse, but um, as far as golf in relations to the other sports, in the athletic program, uh, how how costly is it to run golf? Um, I, I would have now, this, and this is my assumption that golf compared to you know, of course, like um, uh, volley, maybe volleyball or football or well, not I'm not even gonna say football, but volleyball, uh, maybe track and field and some other that it might not cost as much to run, but there's still a real cost to that. There's a cost, but I think it's it's all based on what your hopes and visions for your program are. Golf really it is, to me, golf really is not that expensive and, and can be charted in such a way where it's not that expensive if it's set up in that respect. You know, I mean, it's never gonna cost as much as football, basketball, baseball, it's never going to cost that much, never. Uh, but at the same time, you know, because so many programs have, uh, and it's also based on where you're situated in the country too. That's important too, location, 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 because at the end of the day, if you're in places where you get great weather, you know, 10 out of 12 months of the year, you probably don't have to travel far to compete. If you're in a place where your weather gets really, really chilly and you had about five months of just crappy weather, then you're probably gonna have to expend a little more to travel a little farther to get away from the cold weather. So I think there are a lot of dynamics involved, but I, I just don't see golf as an uber expensive sport to operate at a lot of schools, because I think the positives truly outweigh the negatives uh, when putting together a competitive program. Okay. So um, earlier you, you mentioned something that was interesting to me. Um, your season how long is the golf season when when does the golf season start and when does it end because i, I heard you question. say something great about question. fall this spring <laughs> oh that's a great question yeah we start in august and you end in may if you make national championships ncaa end in june no it's a long season and that's why that's why i think you really have to be cognizant of the fact you have to pick the right student athletes because you know, you're going to go through ebb and flow with players where they're going to have some up weeks, some down weeks, but it's a long season. And it's another reason why you can't, you know, you'll see some programs say, well, we won't re really worry about the fall. We'll focus on the spring. Well, if you have a terrible fall, you're in trouble mentally in your spring. So, yeah, it's a, it's a long year. It's a, it's a really long year. Uh, and that's why conditioning and nutrition is really important on how these players, men and women, 
uh, treating their bodies, how they're treating their academics, if they're getting proper tutoring, if they're getting proper academic support. That's real. That's huge. So that, you know, that, that comment um, brings me to, to, to uh, a question that uh, I did not really have on, on my plate, but I might as well ask it now. What was the real Tiger Woods effect? You mentioned, well, we know that there was an effect as far as minority golfers um, becoming more or an uptick in a number of minority uh, people playing golf. But also one of the aspects that he was known for was his nutrition and fitness. So yeah. how, how did that affect? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, <laughs> Tiger did, Tiger's impact is colossal around the world. I mean, he made people really understand, I think, that nutrition and fitness is, is, is an integral part of the sport in this game. Uh, you see golfers now, I mean, if, if you look at what's out there, I mean, guys like Dustin Johnson, he's in shape. He's a great athlete. Uh, Phil Mickelson has gotten in incredible shape. Uh, of course, Tiger, and you look at Rory, and you look at all these guys, they're in incredible shape. I mean, these guys work out, they eat right. You'll watch a golf tour, and you'll watch Rory and these guys take out uh, different types of food and cer certain types of drink they're eating during their rounds. Uh, golf has changed, and 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 I'll give, Ti I'll give Tiger the credit. I mean, he did a remarkable job changing the game. You know, when, you, when you're over in Shenzhen and you walk up to the driving range, you see Tiger on a billboard. You say, good grace, this man's influence is all over the world, you know, and, and that's what he's done. He's done some things some people can't do. But also, you know, if you flip that, and that's why I love Stephen Curry. I think Steph is, is, is the man. I mean, because think about it. What he's now doing for golf is unbelievable and unprecedented. You know, starting an underrated tour, huge. Uh, supporting Howard, huge. Uh, getting young, diverse people who didn't have the opportunity to get exposed to game, being a champion of PGA Junior League, huge. So, you know, at the end of the day, it takes, again, I'll say it again, it takes that village and Tiger and Stefan and they're all part of that village. It takes all of these types of folks because there are people like this in every community that could do the same thing. You know, I know, I know Charles Barkley has given, my, uh, given Miles College money in athletics. Uh, there are people in different communities that have that have stoked checks. You know, Cameron Champ has given money to Prayer of UNM. Uh, you know, now you have J.R. Smith on the North Carolina a and team. You have a lot of situations now, and I know J.R. has done a great job bringing more notoriety and, and financial uh, wherewithal to their program at a &T. So if you think about it, you know, the opportunity is there for everybody in some community to make that impact. And once again, golf is still one of the only bastions of hope where you can really impact and totally change some lives. Well, you, you mentioned J.R. Um, Smith, and, and uh, of course, you know, he, he plays for a competitor. But um, how, how huge was that for HBCU golf that um, someone with a name such as his went to an HBCU program, um, you know, at, you know, after a, a, a long career in the NBA, um, that he went from that to, to an HBCU. Did that help the, the overall landscape for HBCU golf? I don't, I don't know if it helped for golf, but I'll say this. I'm more, I'm more impressed with him saying to himself, hey, self, I need to figure out a way to better myself, go back to college, do some things, sharpen his mind. To me, that's the more impressive piece. Uh, golf is what golf is. But him understanding the importance of what that education could potentially do in communities for young people that look like him, kudos out, kudos to him. I have mad respect for him for doing it. And, and one reason I asked that was is because um of course you know we all know that coach prime is you know doing his thing at jackson state um, one of the things i did not know before he went to jackson state as head coach was that he actually graduated from talladega uh you know i i, I of course knew about his playing days at florida state 
um, did not realize that he did not graduate from Florida State. And so, um, I, you know, of course, his, his influence as far as HBCU sports across the landscape, I think, had a, 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 a tremendous impact. And um, I'm, I'm just hoping that we get more notoriety across the country, but, and not just the country, across the entire world for HBCUs, what our programs can offer, you know, anyone, no matter where they might be, you know, you know, and, and which brings me to my next question. Um, do you recruit internationally? Absolutely. I have a kid, I have a player coming this fall from the UAE. So yeah, I'm, I'm used to, and I've been coaching a long time. So I've had players from all over the world play for me and they won't discontinue now. I mean, I, I value that experience because I think it it benefits and behooves a kid on my team that's from Chesapeake or Memphis or Orlando to have interactions with players that are from all over the place. I love it. I think that's that's just adding more experience for these young people. Okay. Okay. So let's um let's go back to the um uh, to the PGA uh uh, works championship. Sure. Um, there's, of course, there's a, a, a men's division and there's a women's division. And so uh, approximately for what you saw, <laughs> how many student athletes were out there on the, on the golf course? You say how many? Yes. I think your number in the women's division, I think there were 50 women. And I think on the men's side, there were 50 men, I think. In that, in that, yeah, I think so in the team, in a team version. And then individually, I think you probably had, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you probably had at least 40 women and at least 40 or 50 men. So uh, when I think about Greg Odom Jr. and Everett White and Jr., my top two players, and they finished first and second, but they finished first and second out of all the guys in the whole event. Event, and then I had one young lady, Kendall Jackson. She finished. I'm gonna say top ten. I can't remember off the top of my head. I thought she finished fifth or eighth or something like that. Uh, so I mean, they played remarkably well. They played really, really well. Okay. Well, let's let's um, talk about um, some of your athletes uh, more in depth. Um, you mentioned uh, Greg Oden Jr., who won the national championship as an individual. Right. Um, and and uh, I saw some articles and where you contribute uh, the contributions of your older players and, 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 and then, you know, your uh, less experienced players being able to contribute greatly. Um, talk more about them, please. Well, I think every guy, every guy on the team has a role. You know, Greg has a role. Uh, Joshua has a role. Justin has a role. Edra has a role. And I think at the end of the day, every guy, every guy played their part. I mean, that's literally how I look at it. Uh, no more, no less. No one guy is more valuable than the other guy. I don't believe in that. I just think at the end of the day, they they did what they were supposed to do, and uh, in fact, I mean, here's here's the switch. Last year we played the same event in in at Sawgrass, TPC Sawgrass, first year out. People forget we had a chance to win last year too. You know, we had a bad third round. We led after two rounds. We didn't pull it together. Two guys didn't play well. Uh, those two guys played average golf. We win last year, but they didn't play average golf. They didn't play well at all. All right, fast forward a year, we're not leading going to the last round. With that experience, these guys have a fantastic third round. Experience sometimes is your best teacher. So uh, now Greg, he's at, he was actually the defending national champion, wasn't he? Right, Greg played well the last two years, yep. Okay, okay. And, um, didn't he? Did he play on a uh, 
in May, did he play on a PGA? He played in a PGA uh, Tour event at the Wells Fargo, up at TPC Potomac at Avenue Farms. Yeah, he played. He played in the PGA Tour event. The weather was 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 nasty. Uh, it was brutal, brutal conditions. Um, proud of him. He played well. I think he learned some things. Ball striking wise, he really. Ball striking wise, he realized his ball striking is as good as a lot of guys out there. No question. He'll just have to increase, improve his golf IQ, and make a few other adjustments. But I think he's tre- he's trending in the right direction right now. So um, is he a senior or? Yeah, he has one more year. Okay. Okay. All right. So he's a rising senior. Right. Okay. So coach. Um, Let's talk uh, a, a bit about, um, you know, once again, that that uh, that PGA works. Now, that does not have, uh, uh, besides the women and men, that does not have a division like NCAA, NAIA, you know, USCAA. Does it, I mean, it, is it, it all is, uh, programs from all for like say the uh, the um, uh, I think it, yeah all four of the major yeah if uh, I'm not if I'm not mis- yeah if I'm not mistaken the P the uh, PGA considers all divisions uh, if it's a minority laced institution if I'm not mistaken okay okay well that that's great I I mean I know there are uh, very few other sports. That, that do the same thing. But I, I think it's kind of good too if, if you get to see programs from, you know, across the diaspora that uh, play against each other. Um, you know, even, you know, just for bragging rights or championship rights, you know, for, for whatever, you know, I, I think that's good exposure. And I think that actually helps our HBCUs you know, across the entire landscape. I think so. I just think it, it just gives, it's this great experience. It gives the young people an opportunity to compete and exposure. I think that's the key. We have to expose these young folks. Mm-hmm. So now um, as far as, let's talk about Howard. <laughs> and, and let's say, you know, Howard is the, is, as far as name goes, is it, it, one of the probably top five in the country. Um, can you tell us about some of the academics there, the, the main academics at Howard? Well, I look at it just to touch differently. I, I mean, Howard is a top 80 university, and that's not just black school, white school. I mean, academically, and this is U.S. News reports type uh, leverage. I mean, it's, it's a top 80 institution. Our uh, business school, uh, business school at the university is top 30. Uh, I mean, you, you think about it, you're getting great academics. So, I mean, if a student is interested in business, they're actually going to get one of the best business experience in America. And that's not HBCU, that's period. Uh, how it has a great diversity, whether it relates to you want to be a doctor, a dentist, uh, an attorney, they have all the different options. And based on experience from from uh, a couple of the other departments, I mean, communication and stuff like that, I mean, it's stacked. I mean, it is stacked. The academics are, are first class. And I think that also aids and helps in the type of students that we can attract and uh, what we can also put out into the business force after that four, after that four or five year stint for the student. So, and I think it also makes an easier sale for the students because at the end of the day, you're supposed to be a student athlete first. And I think having that experience in a classroom will aid you when you're trying to go professionally, if that's in the cards for you, athletically. Yeah, because um, actually I, I graduated from high school back in 85. Okay. And um, I remember, you know, I was trying to decide where to go to school. Uh, my mentor at, the partic- at that particular time Whenever I mentioned a, a school to him, and, and all of my choices were HBCUs, um, I mentioned an HBCU. Oh no, no, you don't want to go there. You don't want to go, you know. And even some of our, you know, black people, they, 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 
have some kind of stigma against our own institution, especially if they graduated from, uh, let's say, a top, what, what we consider the top PWI. Right. You know, they kind of tend to look down on HBCUs. And it was so funny because after I took my uh, ACTs and SATs, I got, I received letters of acceptance from Howard at Morehouse. Those were two schools that he couldn't say anything about. Hmm. <laughs> and so, no, yeah, I agree. So, mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and so that, you know, that, that, that speaks for itself, you know, when, when uh, like you said, it, it's a it's a top institution. Period. When people can't say anything about the academics of an institution, um, that speaks volumes for that particular institution. And I agree. You know that Howard is, is is globally known and has produced you know some wonderful uh, alumni. Um, more, you know, more recent. I think people are are familiar with your your P Diddy's and your uh, Felicia Rashad, your Chadwick Boseman, and 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 some others. Um, and so, do you you when when you're recruiting, do you have to fall back on any of that? That you know, well, so and so went to school here, or or any of that, or do. Are you able just to go with, uh, well, these are the strengths of our academic programs? No, I, I've never, I've never mentioned, I've never really mentioned those names at all, actually. Uh, to me, you know, I'm just letting, when, I, when I'm recruiting a student, I'm just, I'm very transparent. If you want a great golf experience, look at my resume. Compared to a lot of these other coaches' resumes, I've been blessed enough to win a national championship at Stanford. I won a Big Ten championship at Michigan State. I won up four other conference titles. I won two here at Howard. Compare resumes to coaches, white school, black school. It shouldn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, I talk about the golf experience. I mean, we have a place to play. We can give you a great schedule. We can put things in front of you that you won't get at a lot of other schools. Uh, because to me, instead of mentioning those other people's names, you can be that name if you do what you're supposed to do here at Howard. Maybe you're the name we're mentioning in 25 years, not their names. We're proud of all the people that have come before. Their accomplishments are unbelievable. But now it's time. Let's put some new plaques on the wall. So now um, you mentioned um, that you have outstanding classes coming in. Uh, can you, are, uh, are you able to, to talk about any of those um, incoming applicants? Yeah, I mean, on the women's side, I have a great transfer, Kira Cox. She had four great years at Furman. She'll come in and be one of the leaders on this team. Uh, two other really good young women players, Morgan Harrell and Marley Franklin. Morgan is from uh, Dallas, and then uh, Marley is from L.A. Really good. They both are really good players, very, very good players, and expected to, to, to uh, participate and be counted on immediately. On the men's side, you know, Hugo, uh, Garcia Villalon, a great player out of the UAE. Uh, Brandon Nairi, really good stick, really good stick out of Columbus, Ohio. Good player. These both of them boys are consistent off the tee. They can go low. Uh, and then, you know, great transfer in. Uh, you know, Marcus Smith, great transfer in. So we're excited about what we have right now. We're, we're really, really excited. I mean, it's, it's fun building. It's like Legos. You put one in front of the other, and before you know it, you have a contraption at the end of what you're building. So I'm excited about this year. 100%. Now, um, you know, so, some of us um, do not have any golf IQ. Um, right. uh, you know, I, and I'll be the first to admit, I'm one of I, I, um, I can't even hit the ball. That, that's how bad I am. I can't hit the ball. If it's right. not put put, <laughs> it's not put put. You know, I, I can call it a day. Now, I, I kind of know how to keep score because right. I was taught how to do that. Um, but how does the scoring work? You, you mentioned um, play five, score four. How does the scoring for a team work? That's how you take the four lowest scores out of five, literally. It's literally that simple. You, have, you play five people, your four best scorers count, your fifth one is thrown out. 
Africa. And so from from um, first to last on the team is the, is the um, lowest cumulative scores. It goes in that particular order. Is that correct? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're added up. Yeah, so if you have you have five scores and four guys shoot 72 and one guy shoot 75, you basically add up 72 times four and you throw the 75 out and that's your team score. So that's 288. That's how you do it. Okay, okay. And now, um, as far as the courses that you play during the season, are 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 most of them PGA regulated um, courses, or oh, are they? No, they're all they're all PGA uh, sanctioned. The, yeah, the proper you know distance, the whole nine yards. Regulation is basically they're all regulation golf courses. Okay. Okay. So when you're when you're playing these, these courses, um and not to not to cause any kind of controversy or anything, but are some of these courses ones that African Americans were not allowed to play um I, at any time in the past? Well, I can't really answer that. I don't really I mean I don't know all the course histories like that, but I mean, you know, golf golf changed you know, golf hadn't long, been so long to where they have access to play on a lot of courses. So some of those places, uh, they still don't have the super access to play. Uh, but it's only been, you know, since, what, 40, 50 years, it's almost 60 years since they've given us some access to play. So, I mean, that's still changing. Some clubs, you still have a hard time getting on, getting access. But it's getting better in a lot of respects, though, 100%. It's getting better. Okay. Well, because I know, you know, um, uh, coming up even before Tiger, you know, Calvin P, um, he was one of my favorite uh, athletes, uh, period, uh, no matter what sport. Um, and then, you know, uh, VJ, you know, I, I love watching VJ play as well. Um, and then, of course, Tiger, you know, I know he brought that entire new audience to golf. And, and I, I actually, uh, I think he still has that effect. If he's not playing in certain tournaments, they're not getting the ratings that they, you know, would get if he were there. Was there? So, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at maybe uh, with, with, with the uh, Tiger effect that we will have more. Uh, black golfers, more minority golfers that will rise to the top and become um, household names. I know um, Tiger played at Stanford, if I'm not, uh, if I, unless I stand correct. Yeah, he did. Correct? He played at Stanford, yeah. Okay, okay. Now, were you at Stanford when he was there? No, I, w I was way after him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So um, now your prospects for next year, of course, I know on the men's side, you're looking to repeat because you said last year you probably should have won last year. Well, no, I didn't say we should have won. won. I just said we were in a, we, I didn't say we should have won. I said we were in a position to win, and okay. we didn't. We kind of faltered the last day, but it was a great experience for the guys, and, and they remembered some of those lessons, and they brought it forward this year. And so, so I know next year you looking definitely looking to repeat. Well, I, um, I, I get I, I don't I never use the word repeat, but what I will say is I'm looking for us to to basically play the best golf that we can play that will give us a chance. I don't I don't believe in repeats, but I do believe because conditions will be different next year, course will be different, the state and city we're playing in it will be different. Uh, but at the same time, I am looking for us to get individually get better each month. And hopefully in May of 23, uh, we have an opportunity to compete and play some of our best golf. And if we do that, I think we have a wonderful chance to be able to compete for a title. Okay. So where um, where are you playing or do you know where the championship will be next year? Yeah, next year I think it's at Shoal Creek and uh, 
think it's a place called Bent Creek or Bent Water, something like that in Birmingham. But I know Shoal Creek is kind of the household name venue down in Birmingham in early okay. May of 23. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I definitely uh, learned a lot more about coffee and, and uh, you know, as far as the team sport, like I said, even though, uh, you know, I said my alma mater won a, a couple of national championships um, and I knew the coach who won those, um, God rest his soul. And ironically, he's a Tennessee State alum. Ron Brayton. And so, okay. and so okay. um, but, um, you know, I said, uh, hopefully more people will become interested in golf and will support, you know, golf. And, um, uh, and, and, and so what would, in your opinion, what could be done to give you more exposure as far as a sport yeah i don't know but i think what really needs to happen in, in hbcu golf minority golf in general i think people that went to a lot of these institutions just simply need to help support their programs don't be afraid to write a check uh you know give some money to these programs i mean the programs need assistance they need help they really do I mean, because at the end of the day, you can't get the notoriety if you don't get the support just to get out there. Some of these programs need something simpler. I mean, if you wrote a, if if you could find a hundred people, at, if you could find a hundred people from each school, give them five grand a piece. That's huge. That pays for entry fees, uh, meals, uh, some hotel stays, and stuff like that for the tournaments. I mean, that's simple stuff. That's simple money. Simple money. And if you think about it, that's less than 500 bucks a month a person can make the donation to that program. Okay. So um, as we get ready to wrap up, um, this is your time to send a message out to, to anyone who you'd like to send a message to. Okay. Um, you know, uh, whether it's, and, and actually, we didn't even talk about this. Uh, do you have assistant coaches? Yeah, I have an assistant. She helps me on mainly with the women, but yeah, she helps with some with the men as well. Okay. Uh, can you talk a little bit about her? Yeah, I just think at the end of the day, I think, you know, she, she played in golf. She played at Towson. She won that national minority when she was at Towson. She went down and won as an individual. Um, Talk golf for a lot of years. This is what I would like to leave the people to understand. Like, if you, if you, if your son or your daughter, they're really, really good players, and they they believe in academics and they think they they really want to have an opportunity to change their life and to try to make it professionally in golf or have Howard is the place for them. We're the place for them. We can provide and help make dreams come true. I promise you that long as I'm at the helm of this place, we're going to put them in positions and help give them the resources and opportunities where they have access to great internships, uh, great opportunities to compete, great tournaments, uh, great competition. How is the place for them? And would you like to give anybody uh, any special shout out before we end? No, no the, the only people I always love to shout out, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't be here without my parents. My parents, I'm, I'm thankful to my mom and my dad. Uh, that's where my golf bug came from, and that's where my my academics uh, started. So I'm always, every chance I get, thanking them. I'm always thanking my mom and my dad because without them, I wouldn't be who I am. So I'm I'm grateful. I'm not gonna lie, I'm grateful. So I'm, I'm I love my parents, and uh, I push some of that same thing off to my players because I see this as a family. It's one thing to just have a coach, but it's another thing to have a mentor who loves you like a father uh, or like an uncle. And that's what I feel like we have with our program. We have a family. We're a large family. Our program is a family. Okay. Well, I would personally like to uh, give a shout out to Mr. Derek Bryant. Um, he, he's definitely one of the best um, SIDs I've ever seen. Um, the information 
information that he uh, that he sends out, I mean, it, 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 it's it's platinum. It's platinum, and he promotes those programs there at Howard uh, probably better than anyone else I've seen in the country. Um, if not, he's definitely one of top ten. So, yeah, DB uh, does a great job. He is fantastic. I concur with that 100%. He does a heck of a job supporting what I do. And I'm all, hey, I appreciate it, no doubt. And so uh, with that, um, Coach, once again, we want to congratulate you on your MEAC championship as well as your minority um, golf champion, national championship, I'm sorry. And um, we do hope that we are able to speak to you again in the future. Sure. And of course, you know, uh, we hope that even though you don't like to use the word, we hope that you repeat. And that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 uh, and, and the same um, goes to uh, Mr. Odom. You know, that'd be, that'd be great to see a three-peat. So. Yeah, I agree. Trust me, I wanted to win it too. So, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you. Let, let DB know, and uh, we'll be happy to jump back on the horn with you. We'd love to do it. All right. Most definitely. Well, thank you very much, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm talking about young shakes. I want to represent this change. This is for my city. Hey, I do it for my city. I don't play on going down. If he think I'm going down, then he gon' burn around. For my city. I ain't never been a jump. And if he think I'm a jump, watch him get his head up. For my city. I don't play on going down. If he think I'm going down, then he gon' burn around. I will never neglect them. That you hear her name and like every one of my records. No, I'm not setting. Ain't no future in your fretting, right? Gotta get this money. Watch me get it, get it all night. Planet flying top flight, higher than space stations. That's why I gotta grind, cause I need it. I hate waiting. Really, I was debating. Didn't think I could make it. Now that I know I'm capable, y'all can love and I hate it. Hope for my city, I'm baking. I'm holding about 50. And if I blow 50, then it's all, then it's all for my city.